1007 Riverland Life of him. Good afternoon. It's Jason taking you through. Now, have you ever considered your feet? You know, let's let's consider the feet just for a few moments, shall we? Yeah. You imagine having to get your foot worked on, and I mean not just the old podiatry, I'm talking the real deal here. Imagine having to have an operation because you've been wearing bad footwear. Is that is that a possibility? Well, there's been a galaxy poll, and I thought, let's take this to the next level. Let's actually find someone to have a chat about this. So let's go straight to the top. We're going to go over to the border. We're going to head over to New South Wales. We're going to have a chat this afternoon to an orthopedic surgeon. Gordon Slater joins us on the phone. Now, Gordon, surely not. The, the, the lovely shoes that we bought out the front of the shoe shop, surely they're not going to do damage that we're going to need an operation. Impossible. No, it's uh, look, it is possible, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> it obviously starts with a lot of pain. So when you look at the Galaxy Pole, it was interesting, 77% of Australians have had pain in their foot at one particular time or another. But uh, I suppose more specifically to your question, uh, US studies have shown that one in six Americans can potentially have an operation on their foot in their lifetime. Now, are we talking lady shoes? Because we've seen some pretty um, pretty radical high heels. Or are, we, are we talking right across the board? Oh, look, you're spot on uh, there. Look, I think specifically when you look at this, really two groups, men and women, as, as we know, and women are the culprits with the high shoe, but there have been uh, you know, recent advances in some of the stud technology and some sporting shoes, which means that they grip well and you see a lot more pivoting style injuries as a result of them because there's not less give. There's also the shoes with the, you know, like, like you're saying, with the, some of the basketball shoes, you've got the bubble in them and stuff like that. So um, more sprained ankles and, and other twists and stuff going on as well. So sporting injuries with shoes can also be another problem as well. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's real, really two groups. I mean, the, the ladies' fashion shoe, the high shoe, is the one that gives the kind of what we call a forefoot pathology, which is you know the standard bunion and corn style issue. And that gets amplified in women because they tend to wear shoes that are too small for them as well. Now, what, speaking of shoes, when they're too small, how can you tell? It's just when, like, when you when you test the the shoe. Is it the old thumb test? Is that the best way to what, What's the best way to, to you know check for a shoe to, to avoid some of these problems? I think the best way is when you're when you're getting fitted for a shoe as a lady, and and they say, "Don't worry, your your foot will stretch the shoe out." That's a sure sign it's too small. All right, don't believe them. You should you should be leaving the sh- shop with a shoe that is really comfortable. You know, if if, if it's tight, don't take it. I remember back to my school years, I remember someone saying, because I was, I was forced, I was a pretty um, underprivileged in some areas because I had to wear the desert boots, and someone said to me the desert boots were so much better than the sneakers. What about the everyday sneaker compared to something like the, the desert boot? Is there much of a difference? Well, look, it's, it's hard to say that one shoe style over another is better, but I suppose the best uh, data that we have on that is that really when you look at shoes, People that don't wear shoes, like in some of the areas in New Guinea and Africa, they almost have zero foot pathology. Now, that's, of course, not possible in an urban environment, but in many respects, the, the less of the shoe, the, the better off you are. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you this question because you said you're an orthopedic surgeon. Uh-huh. Quite often you'll see people when it's too late. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's your advice so that people don't have to come and meet you in Sydney? What, what's the way of people avoiding you now? What's the way of, of looking after their feet? And what, what are the little simple steps that people can take right now? 